you know, you were an industry pundit for years. Now you're in a role where you're working with, you know, hyperscale machines. Uh, so we're here today to talk about the top 500. I mean, in your space, John, does top 500 matter? Yeah, the top 500 matters. Um, and I, I'm struggling with a way to frame this in my own mind so that I can reconcile um, not wanting to be in a horse race with, with the real condition that it is useful to know how things are trending over time. And so um, I think a good way to think about it might be um, your weather forecast or going out and looking at your thermometer, right? So it's good to know whether you're in the 40s and you need a jacket or whether you're in the 80s and you need a t-shirt. Uh, but I don't so much care whether it's 81 or 82. So the top 500, certainly in aggregate, provides us a lot of useful trending information uh, since 1992 or 1993 when it started. Um, I think it's interesting to look at what happens at the number one slot because there are some interesting technologies that people bring to bear in that slot. And it's equally interesting to look at what countries are motivated at a particular time and try to guess what their motivations are for getting that position. But I think what's important about the top 500 um, is not so much individual positions, uh, but what's going on in the top 100? What about that next 100? And then you know, broadening that out um, is something that's harder to get a good handle on, but you know, there's the top 500 and there's the next 5,000. And so you see over time, a lot of churn at that interface. And it's interesting to watch the churn at the other end of the list, the list that doesn't make the press release, uh, and see who's coming up and kind of who's, who's cycling back out. So, so at, at that, uh, that the other end of that spectrum, right, this missing middle mm -hmm. that we're talking about, um, you know, do you see, do you talk to people that uh, they're, they're realizing that, that this kind of computing capability is affordable and it can change the way they do business? Do you, do you come across that? Yeah, so my particular focus these days is in the defense community, right? And we have a missing middle in the Department of Defense, even though we make a, a huge investment at the high end, right? And obviously a much, much larger investment at the low end like everybody does, right? Individual computing. Um, and in the middle there, in the missing middle of the Department of Defense, again, you're talking about people who have alternatives today, they have workflows that work and get them to an answer. Uh, and our opportunity is to go in and say, you know what, these technologies are affordable, we're starting to understand the software well enough. Um, we've got the disciplines down now, there's enough literature about what works and what doesn't work that we have a handle on at least some approaches to getting into building that tool, the tool chains that are needed for the individual workflows. And, and people are willing to listen because um, we're in a fiscally constrained environment and that's not just in the government, it's everywhere. And if you can make a case that you have a solution, not a technology, because people don't want to buy technology, but if you can make the case that you have a solution that helps them manage risk, lets them do, in some cases, really do more with less rather than just talking about it, right? HPC is one of the few technologies that does let you do more with less. And so it, it's very much got to be focused on what HPC, what impact HPC has on a particular set of problems. No one's interested in the technology, they're interested in the answer. So, you know, your job has a lot of challenges, but what's your greatest challenge in terms of communicating that value of yeah. HPC? So, uh, in, in a way, to the extent that we fail in high performance computing and supercomputing to articulate the value, it's totally on us. Because supercomputing is, as Dan Reed said many years ago, the universal intellectual amplifier. Right? You put a dollar into a microscope and you can see the very small, and you put a dollar into the telescope and you can see far away and study the origins of the universe. Right? But you put a dollar into supercomputing, you can study everything. And if, if we can't articulate that so that my mom and dad and, and your sisters and brothers and cousins and aunts and uncles and everybody else can't understand that and get behind it, then we've really let the country down.